Hi everyone, I'm George from Cloud Cannon. Today, I'm talking to you about migrations at scale. Migrating to a static site generator like Hugo is a great move. You get a more secure, more reliable, and more maintainable website. You end up getting more time to work on the things that actually add value to your business. The issue is migrating takes time. Time you don't have because you're not using Hugo. Today, I'm here to present some new technology to help bridge that gap. I've asked the owner of this website if I can use it for this talk, and he was happy to oblige. There are a set of pages that outline all of the uh, attractions and nature walks, beaches that can be seen in our hometown of Dunedin. Within each of these pages, there's some content about where you can go and a map of where to go. It has some uh, share buttons and it has some links to some other attractions and a fixed footer. To start my migration for this website, I need to download the website into a local directory. This will give me the local HTML and static assets I can use to build the static site generator site from. To do this, I'm going to run a new MPX script called SiteScrape. MPX SiteScrape runs and asks me what URL I want to download from. From here, I can add my web URL and where I'd like to download it to. This also asks me if I'm legally allowed to download the site, which I am. Now that it's downloading, I can see exactly what it's doing, creating files on my local machine. Now that that's finished, I can open up my new static site. I now have a static version of Dunedin Attractions sitting on my local machine. I can see that this HTML page has everything it needs with the doc type HTML head and title tag. The only problem is, is that it's repeated across every single page. And with that, it's going to make it hard to maintain. What I need to do is convert the text within this title tag to a variable. I need to turn the meta content inside of this to a variable. And I need to update my layouts to reference the data within each file. That can be time consuming. If only there was a way to automate the whole process. Introducing static shape. Static shape is a tool for automatically shaping a fully static website into an SSG site. It's designed to streamline the migrations of any site into your SSG of choice. Instead of going through the documentation, I'm just going to jump straight into running this tool and we'll take a look at the results. To run static shape, I need to run mpx static shape at latest. I can enter my static site, enter my config, which I'll talk a wee bit more about later and into the folder I want my static site to exist in. Then I get to choose which SSG I want to export to. I'll choose Hugo. Static shape has produced something that resembles a Hugo site. It's got the config.toml, it's got some layouts and some content. It's even got its static files produced over here. The first thing I want to look at is our layouts. And we have two layouts based on how I've configured static shape. On the pages layout, I can see that it's produced some variables at the top here. So our title tag has been replaced with a title tag with a variable inside of it. I can also see our canonical href has been changed, uh, some OG titles and an OG URL as well as the uh, Twitter title. Down here, it's created a content tag for the page contents. I configured an additional attractions collection to pull out some of the different pages. With this, it's come with more metadata, uh, more variables, a more control layouts in here, a few range tags, a different content tag, and a bunch of different markdown elements. This range tag here is the next and previous attractions we looked at earlier in the video. 
This part, I'm going to dive a bit deeper into how did it actually figure out this was a for loop and what variables did it pull through? Before we move any further forward, I'd like to talk about the config. The config is an opportunity for you as the developer to define which pages belong to which collections. And within those collections, where the content tag should be. This is the example used on the Dunedin Attraction site, uh, and there's more that can be found on our documentation. Coming back to how does it work, I want to start with a pretty simple example, which is the title tags. Here we can see that it's correctly converted into a variable. When it compares the title tags, it sees that the element itself is the same, but the children within it are different. And so when it gets to comparing the two text nodes, it knows they don't have the same value and therefore it is a variable. For our next example, we'll be looking at the more attraction se section at the bottom of the page. These two items are almost exactly the same with slightly different data. If you were the developer working on migrating this to a new project, you would likely turn this into a for loop using the same templating for both with additional data. This is what Static Shape has done, and let's dig into how it's done it. This is the layout that has been produced for that particular section. It's created a markdown heading and a, a for loop of all of the attraction items. The markdown heading potentially not the best decision by the system as the content wasn't changing between the two sections. We want to reduce the number of variables that are created and avoid this concept of over variableizing the website. For the for loop, it's correctly identified that the href is uh, different, the images are different, that the details are different, and that there are is a set of badges inside of that, which is also a for loop. And so we've now got a for loop within a for loop. Here are a couple examples of what it was using to compare. So we can see this badges section has three badges. And on this other example, this badges section has one. In one case, it would have been detected as a loop. And in the other case, it would have just been an element. When those two, uh, layouts were merged, it found that the individual element also matched the loop. And so then it converted that element into a loop. It also detected that each of these A tags within this document are the same element and therefore should also be a loop. And that kind of brings to question, how does it know what is and isn't the same element. For loops, uh, we have a certain threshold of um, something being a good match. And determining whether or not something is a good match comes from a function of diffing the elements and generating a score between zero and 100. Zero being no match at all, and 100 being an exact match. And that's done by comparing everything from its attributes, the type of element it is, what children it has within that node, and what text it has at every single attribute and text node. All of that put together creates this nice for loop, which mirrors what a developer may have done. I'd love to do the next part of the talk where I run Hugo serve on the output website and show you that it's a perfect Hugo website, but this project is still a work in progress and there's lots of big things that I want to add to the project. So getting Hugo working is one of them. Uh, combining those templates and creating a base of template where you can use the same functions that have been used already to create a shared template between all of them. Um, collection loops, iterating over uh, all of the loops within the website and seeing if they correlate to any of the configured collections within the site and then changing those loops to then reference those collections. Um, this will deduplicate a whole bunch more data and reduce the amount of variables. Um, at the moment, I'm only diffing HTML pages. Um, it, it's conceivable that those HTML pages contain components which have style tags. It'd be great to be able to 
do the do variables within style tags, do variables within um, and loops within XML documents. Um, you could even go even further and use like a AST parser that like prettier um, and diff script nodes. So then you could get um, different arrays that it injected into different parts of the JavaScript, like it was in that Dunedin Attractions example. Um, there's a whole bunch of things around uh, page content that I didn't cover. So there's uh, if you're parsing out a doc site and you want the content to be converted into Markdown, it would be great if that was done automatically using the scripts that are already there or converting a, uh, a marketing landing page into a um, live editable page builder that works in Cloud Cannon straight out of the box. It's, there's lots of really cool opportunities that can be done now that the foundation is complete with um, the variable parsing and the layout diffing and the node equivalency checks. Um, yeah, if you're interested to get involved, you can find it at staticshape.app. Um, it's also on GitHub. It's open source, MIT license. Would love some contributions to come along. Additionally, if you are currently working on a migration or thinking about moving to static site generators, definitely can get in touch with the Cloud Cannon team. We've helped lots of customers uh, move to a better stack where they have a, a better development life cycle where they're working on the stuff that matters. Um, and we're happy to work on larger scale migrations as well and see if we can get this tool working for you. Um, just get in touch, let us know. Thanks.